How's it going everybody? Too spooky here. I noticed it's been a little while since we've talked about a Mortal Kombat character, so I figured we'd change that today by bringing you 25 facts about Reptile. This one was suggested by a few of you guys, so thank you all so much for the suggestion because Reptile was my favorite character for a pretty long time, so I was pumped up to make this one. Without further ado, let's hop in. Number 1. Reptile's first appearance in the series was as a hidden character in the original Mortal Kombat, depicted as a green palette swap ninja just like Sub-Zero and Scorpion. He also didn't have his own moveset, and instead his moveset was just a mixture of Scorpion and Sub-Zero's. Reptile would randomly appear before a battle along with some sort of cryptic message. These messages were hints on how to fight him, because you see, as a hidden character, certain qualifications had to be met before before you were able to battle him in the first place. First, you had to be in single player. You had to be fighting someone on the pit stage. Now, this is where things get a little tricky, because you were only able to possibly fight Reptile on the pit stage if something flies over the moon. This happened completely at random, so you could play the pit stage level 20 times or more and see absolutely nothing over the moon the whole entire time. It happened at the beginning of the match, and the possible things that flew over the moon were Santa and his reindeer, a UFO, a witch, and even a rocket ship, although some of these were exclusive to certain ports of the game. After this, you needed to double flawless victory your opponent and perform a fatality, all while not blocking once. Performing the stage fatality on the pit would also not count towards these qualifications. If all these qualifications were completed, you would finally be able to fight Reptile. Sounds like way too much effort for a secret fight if you ask me, but I guess the one upside to this is that you get 10 million points for defeating him, so at least you can brag about your high score. Number 2 in regards to the previous fact, it should also be noted that during this time period you couldn't just pull out a smartphone and look up the requirements. Everyone had to band together or suffer alone trying to solve the puzzle of how to find Reptile. You can only imagine what it was like for a group of people to be playing in an arcade and a Reptile jumping on the screen spouting off some secret message. Something like that was unheard of at the time and certainly got people talking. All of the possible secret hints were as follows. I am Reptile. Find me. You must find me to beat me. Look to La Luna. Tip at Fomotub, which is bottom of the pit backwards. You cannot match my speed. Alone is how you find me. 10 million points if you destroy me. Blocking will get you nowhere. Fatality is the key. Perfection is the key. So if you look back at the requirements from the first fact, a lot of these actually make sense as useful hints. But regardless, it's still outrageously difficult to actually pull it off. But can you imagine how many bitches the first guy to find and defeat Reptile got? Zero. Because girls didn't go to arcades in the 90s. When did you become so damn sexist? I'm not! I'm just spitting facts, my boy. This is a fact video, after all. Number 3. Reptile was also one of, if not the first major secret hidden in a video game, and for certain the very first in a fighting game, which would go on to inspire many different secret characters throughout the Mortal Kombat franchise, and many different gaming secrets throughout the video game industry as a whole. As far as how the developers came up with Reptile, they didn't have enough space to add a new character, but after combining the moves and colors of Scorpion and Sub-Zero, they came up with the idea of adding a secret fight without having to do much extra programming. At the time, Reptile wasn't officially a character because he didn't have a backstory or anything like that, and he was simply called Reptile by the developers because of his green outfit and really nothing more. But they ended up fully fleshing out his character with a backstory, unique moveset, and as a playable character in Mortal Kombat 2, and the rest was history. Number 4. Like we mentioned before, once you defeat Reptile you're supposed to receive 10 million points. However, unfortunately a lot of the arcade ports at the time suffered from a glitch that would only reward the player with 2 million points. This was eventually fixed after the game was ported to the Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo port of the game also made it significantly easier to face Reptile, although it's still a bit difficult regardless. This version took away that pesky requirement of a shadow flying across the moon. Instead, you only needed to perform a double flawless with a fatality on the pit stage to face 
Reptile. This version also listed Reptile's name on his health bar rather than Scorpion. Number 5. Like we mentioned before, when Reptile was first created, he didn't have his own backstory or anything like that. But when the developers came up with his backstory, they also ended up giving us the reason that Reptile was just hanging around at the bottom of the pit in the first place. Apparently, Shang Tsung was tired of people somehow surviving the fall to the bottom of the pit, which was apparently happening a little too often. So he instructed Reptile to remain at the bottom and finish off anyone who just happens to survive the fall. Number 6. In Mortal Kombat 9, this secret fight with Reptile was added to the game in homage to the first game. Once again, in single player only, on the pit stage, once a shadow flies over the moon, you need to get that double flawless and perform a fatality to fight a classic costumed Reptile. All while not blocking, by the way. This version of Reptile also has Scorpion's Spear and Sub-Zero's Ice Ball, just like the first game. Number 7. Reptile is a member of the Saurian race. More specifically, he is one of the last members of his race. Originally, he was also thought to be the last sole member of the Saurians, but we'll touch more on that in a bit. The Saurian race itself is a race of reptilian humanoids. This race originally originated from Earth Realm and eventually evolved from dinosaurs into the Saurian race. At one point in the past, the Elder Gods were waging war, and this war ended up causing a great amount of devastation to Earth Realm, which forced the Saurians to flee to another realm, which was known as Zatera. After endlessly trying to rebuild their once great civilization, Shao Kahn made his way to Zatera and quickly conquered it. In the process, almost all of the Saurians were completely wiped out, and Zatera was completely abandoned. Reptile would then spend his days serving Shao Kahn and Shang Tsung directly, and searching for the remaining members of his race on the side in hopes to eventually restore his former civilization. Number 8. Reptile originally looked human due to two possible explanations. One, because his original form was human and he later devolved into a reptilian state, or two, because he was posing as a human by transforming his appearance with some sort of shape-shifting ability. Apparently with great mental strain and being separated from his kind for too long, caused him to lose control of his shape-shifting and revert back to his reptilian humanoid form, or his appearance of course devolved through the same same methods. At the same time, it's also very rare for this to have taken so long, because usually this backwards transformation would have happened a lot sooner. The apparent reason it didn't happen sooner was because of his mental state and determination in serving Shao Kahn. But after Shao Kahn's death, Reptile just fell into a state of desperation and hopelessness, which caused the process to begin again. Number 9. If you've played Mortal Kombat Deception, you'd know that Reptile's body was used as Onaga's vessel to resurrect himself. So after that, Reptile should have been essentially dead, right? Well, he later turns up in Armageddon, so how is he even still alive? Well, right before Shujinko was about to land the final blow on Onaga, his soul was forced out of Reptile's body and then bound to the Nether Realm by Nightwolf, which resulted in Reptile regaining his body. So it's basically thanks to Shujinko and Nightwolf that Reptile was still alive in Armageddon. Number 10. In Mortal Kombat X, Reptile's real name was finally revealed. In some of the intro dialogue between Reptile and Raiden, it's revealed that his real name is Sizoth. Step aside, Sizoth. You know my true name. And the path to your defeat. Number 11. Like I mentioned earlier, Reptile was thought to be the only surviving member of the Saurian race, but in Mortal Kombat Trilogy, a female character named Chameleon was introduced that was the last female member of the Saurian race. Not a whole lot is known about her, but we do know that she spent her life trying to find Reptile to restore their race. So she essentially wanted that di- but because Reptile was brainwashed and serving Shao Kahn, she was never able to get to him. Eventually, she did make contact with Reptile and tried to explain to him that Shao Kahn was the one who exterminated their race. But Reptile wouldn't listen, and in the process, she was exiled. Since then, she's roamed the realms, trying to find a way to kill Shao Kahn. So while Reptile's wish was to serve Shao Kahn, hers was to kill him for revenge. Moral of this fact, though, Reptile is in fact not the sole remaining Saurian. Chameleon has has yet to make her appearance in the new timeline though, so as of right now in the current timeline, Reptile is still the only Saurian. Number 12. 
It's also quite possible Reptile is not the only remaining male Saurian as well. This is due to the speculation that the male Chameleon is also potentially a Saurian. This mainly comes from his Armageddon appearance being so similar to the female Chameleon. But the male Chameleon is actually the most mysterious character in the series as we know very, very little about him. The only thing we do know is that he has been around at least since the events of the first Mortal Kombat game lurking in the shadows, simply lying in wait for his opportunity as the events unfolded. But that's it. So I need to ask you guys, is Chameleon a member of the Saurian race or something else entirely? Be sure to comment down below and tell me what you think. Number 13. There was also one more Saurian who is considered non-canon. This occurred in the animated series Defenders of the Realm. This Saurian's name was Komodai, and his appearance and backstory is very, very similar to Reptile's in pretty much every way. So he's essentially Reptile that wasn't actually named Reptile. It should also be noted that the reason Komodai wasn't actually Reptile himself was because this TV series was actually a continuation to the live-action movie, and Reptile, of course, died in that movie. Oh, god damn it! Thanks for the spoilers, asshole! Towley, the movie came out in 1995. You've had over 20 years to go see it. Like, it's your own fault at this point. Whatever, loser! I expect a spoiler alert before you drop a bomb like that one next time! Piece of shit. <sighs> I can never win. Number 14. In Mortal Kombat 2, Reptile's ending revealed that Reptile found out Shang Tsung was planning on forcing the remaining members of Reptile's race into slavery under the rule of Shao Kahn. Reptile then defeats Shao Kahn in the ending, turns against Shang Tsung, and frees the remaining members of his race where they then live in peace. So although this ending is of course non-canon, this could mean that Shang Tsung has a secret collection of Saurian slaves that Reptile just has no idea about, meaning in addition in addition to the others we recently mentioned, Reptile is by no means the last Saurian. Number 15. Burger King Foot Lettuce The last thing you'd want in your Burger King burger is someone's foot fungus. Just kidding. Anyway, in Mortal Kombat 4, Reptile was given a new revamped reptilian look rather than just being your basic palette swap ninja. However, you could play as Reptile in his palette swap form by holding start and pressing the high kick command twice before selecting the character. This alternate costume is basically a palette swap of Scorpion, but it still has Reptile's green skin and he doesn't take off his mask for fatalities. Number 16. In Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Reptile was given an alternate costume of his look from Shaolin Monks due to its popularity, but his more reptilian look from Deadly Alliance was still kept around because it was more accurate to the timeline. Number 17. In Mortal Kombat 9, Reptile was not able to speak. At least from what we heard, he was only capable of different assorted snarls. However, in Mortal Kombat X, Reptile is able to speak regularly. Number 18. Depending on the game, Reptile's blood has been depicted as both red and green. In the first two games, his blood was red. In Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, his blood was then turned to green. In Mortal Kombat 4, it was back to red, and then ever since it has been primarily green aside from a few flip-flops here and there. Also in Mortal Kombat 9, if Cabal uses his It Takes Guts fatality on Reptile, it's revealed that Reptile has both red and green blood mixed in with his organs. So even recently, they still just can't decide. ¿Por qué no las dos? Number 19. Reptile is tied with Sub-Zero and Raiden for having the weakest X-Ray in Mortal Kombat X, only doing a measly 31% damage in total. Number 20! In Mortal Kombat 9 on the infamous Challenge Tower, on Challenge 227 you get to play as Cyber Reptile, a palette swap of Cyber Sub-Zero with Reptile's moves, which on its own is pretty goddamn cool. But it turns out there's actually a little bit of a story being told about this throughout the challenge tower, and Reptile was not actually cyberized. Instead, a cyber ninja called Unit 5 is tasked with locating Reptile. He does locate Reptile and then reports it back to Cyrax and Sector. However, Reptile ends up killing Unit 5 before their arrival and takes control of his armor. So Reptile is essentially just inside Unit 5's armor or wearing it or something like that. He isn't actually cyberized contrary to popular belief. 
Number 21. It's ironic to note that in Reptile's bio for Mortal Kombat 4, it was noted that Reptile was banished for committing genocide on multiple other species, when his species were previously subject to genocide from Shao Kahn's army. Number 22. Reptile's age is unknown, but it's estimated he could be anywhere from 10,000 to even millions of years old. It's merely possible that he could be this old because the war between the Elder Gods that destroyed the Saurians' original home in Earthrealm took place millions of years ago, but it's more likely that Reptile was born in Zaterra sometime afterwards. Number 23. In Mortal Kombat 2, Reptile's head was considered a completely different sprite, which is why the Reptile head will still appear when using Acid Spit even if Reptile is currently invisible. Number 24. In an interview with Ed Boon, he revealed that he originally thought up the idea of Reptile's palette swap while sitting in a KFC drive through and apparently by the end of the day, Reptile was completely programmed into the first Mortal Kombat game. And the moment that you've all been waiting for... Number 25. Earlier we mentioned a fact about Reptile reverting back to his reptilian appearance due to mental strain and separation from his kind. While writing out the script, I think I figured out the true reason why this occurred. It was originally stated that Reptile's appearance was transformed because he simply had the ability to transform himself and keep up that human appearance. But in his Armageddon ending, Reptile was able to find a female Saurian. In the process of finding her, it said his appearance slowly started reverting back to his human form, meaning that his human form could possibly be his true form. But that's beside the point. I believe the reason that Reptile was able to retain his human appearance all the way up until Mortal Kombat 4 was simply because one of the two chameleons were always near him. We know that the male chameleon was always lurking nearby in the shadows for one, but putting the male chameleon aside because he may not be Saurian after all, the female chameleon alone was actively trying to get close to Reptile all the way until the end of Mortal Kombat Trilogy or Mortal Kombat 3, when she eventually left in defeat to travel the realms. So until that point, the female chameleon being within the near vicinity of Reptile time and time again could have helped Reptile retain his human form. Then after she left, the separation began to slowly change Reptile through the events of Mortal Kombat 3 to Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance with the addition of extreme mental stress. It sounds like a pretty solid explanation to me, or a solid theory at the very least, but you guys will have to let me know what you think once again in the comment section down below. But there you have it everybody, 25 facts about Reptile. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and hopefully you learned something new. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and comment down below which Mortal Kombat character you would like to learn about next. Also be sure to follow me on Twitter and Twitch if you're feeling extra saucy. And before we go, I've actually got a small bonus fact for you today, which is number 26. Because the original hidden character of Reptile was the talk of the town back in the day, it even led to rumors of a different hidden character in the first Mortal Kombat game called Ermac. I won't spoil what occurred after this, but if you want to learn more about Ermac and how they came to be, be sure to click here for 25 facts about them, or feel free to click here for 101 facts about Mortal Kombat as a whole. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time with a new video. Half of my team is in Junk Junction, ooh na na. They took me back to Pleasant Park, ooh na na.